values certainly guide our lives throughout our generations and throughout history. And values exist in abundance in our society. With due respect to many who believe that values have eroded, the problem is not with the erosion of values per se. The problem is with the erosion of institutions that ought to sustain values. Values are like the water in the glass, in that container. The water always exists. But without the container, the water evaporates. It's there somewhere without form or content in a usable form. And the container is the one that holds the water and makes it usable. And that is the institutions. Without the institutional framework that nurtures, sustains, promotes, and rewards values and behavior based on good values, no matter how much we lament decline in values, things will continue to seem to deteriorate. In our great civilization, values continue to inspire us, but they do not necessarily promote our behavior in tune with those values. And what greater institution in our wonderful democracy than the Parliament of India? The Parliament is not only the embodiment of the sovereignty of the people of this country. It's the lawgiver. It is the mother of the government in our Westminster model of parliamentary democracy. It's the one that enforces accountability. And it's the one that ought to set example to all of us. The Honourable Speaker eloquently told us what we all are aware of and are anguished about. The decline in the capacity of the Parliament to inspire, to ennoble, and to guide. And it's not merely the Parliament of India we're talking about. In a fundamental sense, it's the legislatures of India. Because much of the challenges of governance and much of the challenges of institution building in nurturing values in society, they remain in the states of the Union. While the Union Parliament obviously is the embodiment of our Constitution, the real problems and challenges obtain at the local level. It's hard for us sitting in Delhi to recognize that, but I ask all of you to please recognize that the soul of India is going to be determined, its future is going to be determined by what happens in the states and in local governments. The predicament of India, the predicament of politicians everywhere, but particularly in India, is to make this challenge of making the right thing saleable. It's easy for us to blame politicians. We love to hate our politicians. It's not a particularly Indian pastime. It's a global democratic pastime. This healthy skepticism is necessary. Long ago, Somebody asked Disraeli, the great British statesman, if he would elucidate the audience about the difference between a misfortune and a calamity. Now, Disraeli and Gladstone were the great rivals on the British political horizon at the time. And Disraeli promptly said, young man, if Gladstone were to fall into River Thames, that is a misfortune. But if somebody saves him, that is a calamity. We all feel that way about our politicians. In our moments of despair, we hope that politicians do not exist. But there is no substitute to politics and politicians. Because in this country, politicians have become victims of a vicious cycle. The money power in politics, vote buying, phenomenal money power. In the state of Andhra Pradesh, where assembly elections are due in the next few months, Shri Adwaniji was there in Andhra Pradesh the other day. About 4,000 crores is going to be spent only in the state assembly election. And Swamiji, I am not guilty of untruth. I am speaking the truth. 4,000 crores in one state assembly, in one election. And in terms of purchasing power parity, that is over 10 times what was spent for the American presidency in the final phase of the general election by the two leading candidates. In our country, one legislative assembly election costs 10 times more than 
the American presidency. Most of it is illegitimate and unaccounted. It's easy for us to blame politicians. How do you change the incentives? And of course the freebies, the two rupees rise, the free rise, free power, color television and a hundred other things. And the speaker so aptly said the fragmentation of India. The idea of India is in retreat because of subnational impulses and divisive forces.